Kevin Stitt is just a typical colonizer, dreaming of erasing all Native American tribal nations in Oklahoma because he believes that tribes are in the way of American exceptionalism. This guy's unlike any Native we know. So, is he even for real? And I know some journalists who have tried to go figure out what his relationship to that tribe is. Graham Brewer teamed up with another reporter, Simon Romero, and their investigation into Stitt's ancestry was published as a collaboration between High Country News and the New York Times. To understand his ties, you have to go back to before Oklahoma was even a state. In 1889, the area that we call Oklahoma was owned by natives, and it was broken down into allotment land. That means each native, man, woman, and child, got 160 acres. Collectively, it was referred to as Indian Territory. And around this time, oil is being discovered. So Graham Brewer's 2020 investigation in High Country News found that Kevin is only enrolled Cherokee because one of his ancestors frauded the government and paid to be on its rolls. Stitt had only one direct tie to the tribe, which was Francis Dawson. His ancestor, Francis Dawson, paid $100 a head for him and his family to be added as Cherokee citizens. Well, sorry, why would anybody do that? It's just to get some free land. The reward, 160 acres for 100 bucks. Uh-huh. So that land is worth about $11 million today. And if you own land as an indigenous person who's a member of a tribe, it's not taxable. There was this easy way to get land, and all it took was payment to one of those land agents registering as an Indian on the rolls. And he got some acres. How common was this? It was actually so fucking common because they already knew the land had oil. This is like Killers of the Flower Moon stuff. You know, they know that this land is valuable, and so they start allowing. And it's common practice. Uh, Lucinda Hickory Foundation is doing research, and it found that most federal land bureau agents did take these bribes. It was so common practice, it was like their bonus. Uh Governor Stitt denies this claim, and he calls it unsubstantiated slander. We do know that the Cherokee Nation, you know, this is around 1900, the Cherokee Nation was disputing some of these people who were on these rolls, and they were trying to appeal it. According to the court transcripts, that the, the, when the Cherokee Nation challenged Francis Dawson's uh, enrollment, uh, the federal courts decided at the time was that, that, that the rolls were final. So around 1900, the Cherokee Nation tried to disenroll Francis Dawson. But the federal government ruled in favor of the Dawson family, and they were kept on the rolls. So the Cherokee Nation right now doesn't technically have a process for disenrollment. Well, I think we should take about 20 steps back here. I mean, the whole premise of this series is that we're looking at people who are pretendians. And we define pretendians in a specific way, and that is people who are indigenous, who are citizens of indigenous nations. That is a person who is a native person. So if we're going citizenship first and we're looking at the sacred card, well, he's a citizen, so he's not a pretending full stop, no? But the tribe tried to kick his ancestor off in the 1900s. Not only does Kevin not show, because I mean, I know natives who just don't know their culture or don't know their language and they're trying to reconnect. Kevin doesn't even do that. He basically is just like, yep, the federal government let me in and the rest, fuck you, I'll do what I want. And it really doesn't even seem like he's ever cared about Indian people. I I mean, caring about Indian people isn't really a test of sovereignty, though. It's just a test of, like, good taste. If I had to do a prediction, though, I think that someday when Governor Stitt is not the governor, I feel like the Cherokees are going to boot him. I'm just putting my money on it. Okay, so what is he up to now? Right. He's in his last term, so Kevin's not going to be governor anymore unless he pulls some miracle out of his ass and... um. We'll have to just watch. I feel like he's got a a life left in politics, but I don't think it's going to be in the state. I think he's going to jump Fed. Right, because I, I've seen him pop up in the news quite a bit lately, especially with this Texas border stuff. It sounds like he's sort of trying to set a stage for him to get interior under a Trump administration. Yeah, he, he really would be that conservative solution to the native problem. But I would encourage whoever would appoint him to that office to really look at his track record in court. He loses a lot. I mean, so does Trump, though. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. So, Robert, as you heard, 
Kevin Stitt has some extreme ideas about natives. He just fundamentally does not recognize the sovereignty of tribal nations. He uses his Cherokee status, which he inherited from his pretendian ancestor, to lend credibility to his wild ideas. Now, when he was just in the government at the state level, there were some limits to how much harm he could do to us. But imagine this guy as the token Indian of a Trump administration. That just scares the hell out of me. It's so obvious. The governor just wants to force Native Americans in Oklahoma to live as individuals in a white American, Christian, and neoconservative society. Kevin Stitt needs to realize that he is not the king of Oklahoma. He can't force all Oklahomans to live in a neoconservative Christian monolith society. Especially when that society is diverse and multicultural. Without that multi-ethnic cultural melting pot and Native American tribes, the state of Oklahoma just wouldn't be the tourist attraction and historic success.